technical elements of a successful cataract procedure include the incision design. The incision design should be such that there is minimum surgically induced astigmatism. So whenever a surgeon is making incisions on the cornea, we make a main port incision and two side port incisions for phacoemulsification surgery or we are making a large curvilinear incision from 10 to 1 o'clock in cases of extra capsular extraction. Now whenever you are cutting the normal corneal surface, some amount of surgically induced astigmatism is bound to happen. But you must look at preoperative curvature of the cornea, that is the K1 and K2, to decide which is the best side to operate so that the astigmatism in the post-operative period can be minimum. Also, over a period of time, with experience, the surgeons, they refine their technique and the surgically induced astigmatism or the SIA reduces over a period of time with refined techniques. Then we also aim to get a watertight closure of the incision. The incision can be either self-sealing in cases of small incision cataract surgery or phacoemulsification surgery or in cases of extracapsular or intracapsular cataract extraction, we need to suture the large incisions using 10 nylon sutures. We want little or no trauma to happen to the corneal endothelium. Remember that corneal endothelial cells do not regenerate once they are lost. We also don't want any trauma to the iris or any other ocular tissue. And we want the intraocular lens to be nicely settled in the capsular bag where it is supposed to be. And in this case, if it is in the bag, the lens is way away from the endothelium. So there is no risk of damage to the endothelium. And since the posterior capsular bag is intact, there is no vitreous loss. So there are no posterior segment complications as well. So before we start the surgery on a patient, you want your patient to be comfortable. So for that, anesthesia needs to be given so that the patient does not feel pain and there is some akinesia that means there is no movement of extraocular muscles. Now, in the modern day cataract surgery where phacoemulsification is done, where the surgery is about just 8 to 10 minutes duration, where you are making a small incision, in those cases, topical anesthesia, wherein you are just giving anesthesia, using some anesthetic drops such as proparacaine is used. But when we talk about extracapsular extraction or even small incision cataract surgery, the procedure takes a little longer time and therefore you want that the patient as well as the surgeon both are comfortable with no movement of the extraocular muscles. So for that, we give a block which is called as a peribulbar block. There is injection which has a short acting anesthetic agent that is lignocaine 2%. We have a long acting anesthetic agent which should last at least till the time of the end of the surgery and a little beyond and that is bupivacaine 0.75%. You want this mixture that you have made after you inject it to spread in the entire area and bring about the desired effect. So you use hyaluronidase. It is used in the quantity of about 5 to 7.5 international units per milliliters. And then you want vasoconstriction. So adrenaline is put in this mixture. One is to 200,000. Before the surgery starts, the surgeon scrubs. The scrubbing agent used is uh, betadine 7.5%. The scrubbing should be done in a fashion that no part of your hand or your arm is untouched. So the dorsum of both the hands are cleaned, the palms are rubbed with each other, the interfinger spaces are covered and even the thumb and the spaces between the thumb and the fingers are covered. So make sure there is a good hand hygiene prior to the surgery. Whenever you are scrubbing, we scrub in a fashion that the water that is now 
cleaning our hands is falling away from the hand and goes out through the ankle you never wash your hands like that that the water from the elbow so the water that is coming from the elbow goes towards the hand so the direction of water flow should be from your hand towards the elbow a good scrubbing is important after scrubbing there is donning of the gown and of the gloves then you come to the table where the patient is lying the patient and the area the uh, the the patient should be lying comfortably if they have certain back issues make sure that there is a roll of sheet underneath their back so they are not uncomfortable during the surgery and they don't move the area of the eye that is to be operated the surrounding area needs to be cleaned with betadine the betadine percentage used here as an antisepsis and cleaning agent is 5% go in concentric circles so the area that you have cleaned once will not be touched again so you go in concentric circles of increasing diameter once you have cleaned that is painted the area with betadine then use a drape to drape the area so that the field becomes sterile now there is a huge risk of endophthalmitis that can happen after a cataract surgery so you you need to take some preoperative prophylactic measures the first is meticulous prepping and draping using betadine 5% you must instill 5% betadine drops in the conjunctival cavity and post operatively at the end of injections intracameral antibiotics such as intracameral moxifloxacin should be given so now let's just have a look at the extra capsular cataract extraction surgery i would be showing you a video but before we go on to that let's have a look at the schematic diagram for this procedure so the surgeon is sitting at 12 o'clock position and the patient is lying down you make an incision either on the clear cornea that is from 10 to 1 o'clock but usually we make an incision at the limbus elderly is have a little loose conjunctiva so you can have conjunctival calesis and this loose conjunctiva can cause hooding on the limbus so we do conjunctival peritomy so we cut the conjunctiva from 10 to 1 o'clock in the area in which we want to make the incision at the limbus after doing conjunctival peritomy this the second step is showing cutting of the conjunctiva so after we have cut this conjunctiva we either make a groove at the we mark the area that we want to make the incision so we make a groove at the limbus from 10 to 1 o'clock now the surgeon is sitting here that is a 12 o'clock so here is 1 or 2 o'clock position and from there till 10 o'clock so we now make a scleral groove then either you can make the section right now or in some cases if you want to stain the anterior capsule for doing a capsulotomy you go via a small paracentesis port that you create in this groove put in the dye stain the anterior capsule do capsulotomy come out and then make this huge incision so now you open up this area from 2 to 10 o'clock once this area is opened up and here they are doing capsulotomy you have cut the anterior capsule remember the lens is lying in a capsular bag this is the anterior capsule this is the posterior capsule and right here we have the lens now if i want to access this lens i want this anterior capsule gone so what i do is i use a 26 gauge needle bend it to form a instrument called as cystitome and go in circular fashion and cut this anterior capsule this is called as capsulotomy so once the anterior capsule is gone i have free access to the lens and then using instruments like wire vectors and lens hook and using the pressure counter pressure technique i try and take out the lens from the section that i have created once the lens is out 
then I do irrigation and aspiration of the cavity to remove the remnant cortex that is adhered like strands in the periphery. If you leave cortical strands that are right here, then and if, if leaving these strands you put the intraocular lens, what will happen over a period of time is that these cells that are there in the equatorial region will migrate towards the posterior surface of the IOL and eventually lead to the formation of posterior capsular opacification. So you do a thorough cortical wash, do a good irrigation aspiration, then once this is out, you have an empty bag. Now you want to inflate the bag before you put in the intraocular lens. So you put viscoelastic material, inflate the bag and put the intraocular lens and later on you suture the section that you had opened up.